Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nisi Lexi Live as we go virtually around the globe to bring you one of the best talented um, musicians, artists, businessmen, or businesswomen. And we're super excited today to have a special guest joining us today. He needs no introduction. But for those who don't know him, he's an award winning Malawian recording artist. Hazy Angola is a Malawian rapper, singer, songwriter, as well as an entrepreneur. And he, he's best known for his diversity composer and lyric uh style and today we're going to be talking about some of his uh business venture as well as his musical journey and i'm super excited to be having him here at nisi lexi please help us welcome hazy angola how are you doing sir <laughs> i'm all right how are you i'm all right how are you i'm good good welcome to the show Our Canadian audience and for those who meeting you for the first time we want to get to know you so who is Hazy Angola? Um, uh, Hazy Angola is a Malawian recording artist, um, uh, entrepreneur and uh, philanthropist and um, yeah basically that's pretty much it yeah but I, I would like to think that I'll be something else I'll add something else to my portfolio as well but for starters, I'm a musician, an entrepreneur, and a philanthropist. Awesome. So uh, take us back. Like, when did you start entering the music industry? When was it like, oh, you're like, okay, you know what? Being a rapper or was, an artist, it's my calling. Um, Career-wise, I'd say I've, I've been doing it professionally for like the past maybe eight years, mm -hmm. right? But uh, music has been a huge part of my life. I come from a family where there's no musical background. So I'm the first, you know, I'm the first musician in my family. Mm -hmm. And it was purely out of interest, you know, growing up, I listened to a lot of music, you know, from my, from my, from my mom, from my sisters. I was born, I was born and raised in Blantyre. So um there's a lot of musical influences here as well you know and the neighborhood i grew up in chitawira mm -hmm. uh, also a lot of a lot of great artists have come out of there as well so we're basically just influenced by you know other people's interest in the craft as well so yeah. we generally built my interest as well and also going to a christian school i went to a christian primary school called junior academy mm -hmm. and music was a really big part of it so every morning you know during assembly or whatever activities music was involved then there was the studio that was at the school as well that was owned by the uh, the owners of the school so they always had us in and out of the studio and stuff like that so mm -hmm. i would say like from from like six seven years old you know i had music in me you know but you know professionally i've done it since like maybe 20 2014 to date oh wow that's that's such a like a you know a story to just kind of see where your environment able to provide you with all the tools that you need and then kind of inspiring you to get into the industry um very so much I, I love that story another thing that i wanted to ask you obviously you big in the game for eight years as, prof as a professional uh, musician what is some of the best strategy that would you uh, kind of like let other people that are coming in, let's say there's a uh, young artist who's trying to enter the industry, from your personal experience, what do you think that they need as a best strategy to make sure that they're successful for this long? First and foremost is the belief, you know, mm -hmm. you know, believing in yourself. I didn't, I didn't, you know, until 2014 i didn't actually realize at first i just used to do it to impress my friends you know with my lyrics and all that and then i realized yo man this could actually be something that i could do you mm -hmm. know this could actually be my career you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. first is the belief that you can actually do it you can actually make it your career and then surrounding yourself with people that are going to help you realize that dream you know um i i i've worked with different kinds of people um I, I i'm in a group called homegrown african with 
somebody I met back in primary school as well. We went to the same school and yeah. we started the same, we started a rap group back in 2014. And then somebody just happened to come to the studio we were recording at who believed in us as well. You know, he, he was like, yo, we could actually make this something. So yeah. I believe, you know, putting yourself in the right environment and connecting with the right kind of people to help you, you know, actualize it, you know, is the very most important thing on mm -hmm. your own the chances are very slim you know because you need different kinds of input as well you know besides having that natural talent that natural gift mm -hmm. you know you need people who are more technical than you people who are more experienced than you to help you do certain things you know to build your career and you know help you set up mm -hmm. and i believe that is by far the most important thing working with people who believe in you and you know helping you structure everything out you know because there's you can be the most talented person in the world but if you if you don't have a plan if you don't have a strategy and if you don't have people to do that with then your dream is as good as dead you know yeah i actually i love yeah. i love the fact that you stress so much about like having that community of people to rally along around you but not only that it's like learning from them uh this yeah. is also beyond just the music it's just as an entrepreneur itself you need people that have different skill sets to be able to cultivate and help you kind of like grow as a as an individual i love how you mentioned that this is a great advice um absolutely, absolutely. Thing, i wanted to ask you obviously um being in the industry itself it could be really hard and it could also be really sweet and fun so how are you able to kind of like you know manage and maneuver and making sure that you know what if i need to stay and make sure this is a business not treated just like as a hobby how did you able to yeah. like transition that mindset from just being uh impressing your friends to now it's a business like i said you know you need people who have different skill sets to be around you right mm -hmm. you can't do everything so there's certain things that are not required of me to do you know like you know the accounts and um, all that other stuff you know there's other people that are responsible for that which leaves me the task of taking care of creating and being the artist which is the most important thing without me being the artist nothing else is important so mm -hmm. i focus on my craft you know making the music designing the clothes you know um for the brand, you know, basically getting involved in the community, doing a bunch of other things, mm -hmm. you know, that the other members of the team can't do. So I very much focus on what I'm responsible for and what tasks, uh, you know, I've been assigned to, you know, mm -hmm. you know, besides me being the artist, you know, I also follow instructions, you know, I'm, I'm also sent out to do things, you know, there's certain times that Mm -hmm. you do certain things that you don't want to but you just that's where the the term professional comes in you know doing the things that are required of you even if you don't want to do them you know so i believe i believe it's it's really really important it all goes down to that setup you know delegating you know and basically just trying to understand you know doing research and being aware of mm -hmm. certain things that you need to do to build your career and you know build a team so i believe it's the team mm -hmm. that helps you actualize everything you know that's powerful that's powerful that you mentioned like teamwork dedication and also like doing things that you're not comfortable with <laughs> it's for yeah. me i actually resonate with that so much it's like sometimes <laughs> it would be like uh 3 a.m. We have to do something, but a project. We're like, oh, should I sleep or should I actually get it done? So yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah. So I love how you stress that. Uh, you able to mention that. Another thing, uh, I know you have produced a lot of uh, successful hits, such as the Pressure Make Diamonds, On That Low, and um, my personal favorite, which is the Do Dada. I think I'm pronouncing it wrong. Uh, can yeah. you tell us? what is the inspiration behind these three songs like how did you come about it like for me i like to talk about the things that i'm experiencing in that particular period of time you know mm -hmm. so if you're talking about pressure makes diamonds and on the low mm -hmm. these basically just reflect 
they were basically a reflection of where I was at in my life, you know, building a brand, you know, like if you listen to some of the lyrics, I'm like talking about, you know, having a different perspective to life. Like I started seeing things a little different now, you know, mm -hmm. road to success, they try to keep us out. You know, these are challenges that you experience, you know, as an artist where there's certain blocks, you know, that come mm -hmm. in your way, you know, but if you believe in yourself, you know, that pressure, if you work under that pressure, you're guaranteed to make diamonds, you know? So on the low, you know, records like on the low are basically talking about me, you know, getting as an artist, getting into business, you know, full time, trying to hustle, trying to build a brand, trying to build a company, you know what I mean? So I'm just basically talking about my life experiences and some experiences that, you know, uh, some of my peers go through some of some of the experiences, you know, my fellow artists go through, you know, I basically draw my inspiration from the things that because as human beings, we consume a lot of information a lot of information on a daily basis, you know, uh, and, you know, just add the li internet there, and, you know, <laughs> you've got too much info. Yeah. So it's just about, you know, me being able to be in my space and being able to articulate what I've been able to pick up along the way and the things that I've understood, the knowledge that I've acquired, you know, and basically just expressing it in through music or through the clothes or through, you know, whatever platforms that, you know, whatever opportunity I get to express myself, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like as an, as an artist, it's very important for you to be aware of what's happening around you or what's happening around, or what's happening around your communities, you mm -hmm. know, your society around your country, your continent and the globe, you know what I mean? So you, yeah. it's all about, you know, uh, relaying that information the best way you can possible. You know, so basically I draw my inspiration from anything, you know, I could, I could go get off this call and make a, a, a song about this conversation that we've just had, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, that, that's talent. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, able yeah. To do that, that's like a pure inner talent. <laughs> I, love, yeah. I love, I love how you, you basically like, you know, structure and making your song is more of like an impact and showing inspiration and, um, of that nature. And something that you mentioned during when you were explaining, um, like the business side of things. So now let's talk about business. Uh, I know you yeah. are founder of, uh, you have your own Conquer clothing line, as well as yeah. perfume collections that you have launched. Can you tell us more yeah. about how did you even get into the industry for the fashion industry? Just walk us through what was that all about? Oh, uh, <laughs> man, like. I didn't even know that I had like this entrepreneurial streak in me. You know what I mean? I didn't know until at first it was just, yo, man, let's, you know, let's, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, you know, we was like uh, young. This is like maybe 2016, 2016, 2017. Mm -hmm. And we're broke at the time. And we're probably thinking, man, it's so hard out here you know what i mean it's like difficult you know yeah to set up anything to start anything you just need you just need to rise above it you know so that's basically where the brand name came from to conquer mm -hmm. you know which means to overcome and to take control of your situations so at first that's what i thought it was that yo man it's like a clothing brand like a sean john or something mm -hmm. like that you know what i mean mm -hmm. but the deeper we got into it you know we realized yo man we we had to change our you know business plan we had to change our business philosophy because we realized that yo this is actually more than just a clothing brand it's a lifestyle brand mm -hmm. you know we, you know we, when we're talking about fashion it's a lifestyle we're talking about music it's a lifestyle you know, yeah. we're talking about uh, the fragrances. It's also a lifestyle, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're like, yo, man, this is a brand that could go beyond just the clothes, you know? So why don't we expand? So hence the fragrances and we're going to do a, a bunch of other stuff as well. And we actually, we're actually the first brand in Malawi mm -hmm. to have an apparel store, you know? The first one, the first of its kind in 2020, we launched that. Yeah. And uh, we are the first brand as well to 
sponsor a football team, you know, by m- being their manufacturers, manufacturing their jerseys and all that other stuff. Yeah. You know, so that just goes to show that, you know, at first we thought it was something else, but you know, that's what happens when you invest a lot more time and you do a lot more research into your business, into your craft. Mm-hmm. You know, you find out there's more layers and layers it's like an onion, you know, you just keep peeling off layer layer after layer after layer and then you know in the end you might find out that you end up doing something you initially didn't think you would you know yeah and the first business you started is completely 10 15 years down the line you're doing absolutely something different so yeah. it's just also that that's what also the brand represents you know by being open minded you know what i mean that's what we want that's what we're advocating you know to say yeah. look man despite where you are the world is no longer, you know, we're no longer divided by lines, you know, by Mm -hmm. borders and stuff, you know, it's doesn't matter where you are, you can do something special. You know, I mean, if Nike did it, if uh, all these Under Armour and all these famous brands have done it, Mm -hmm. you know, we're the same consumers as well. So we don't want to just be consumers anymore. We also want to contribute to that market as well you know being from malawi being from africa as well you know that look it doesn't matter wherever you are in the world you know you can conquer so yeah basically basically our brand represents that you know we represent that and the business side of it you know it hasn't been easy because um i have no experience had no experience running a business yeah you know so like i said you know it's all about putting people together you know and you know help you know organize this thing you know do all the technicalities all the legal stuff there's a lot that goes into it you know so as we went on these are things that i've had to learn you know and still learning you know but it's not easy but it's doable it's possible yeah i actually love the fact that you know it's just like taking a simple idea be like hey i want to make clothing line we we're having this um Sometimes I feel like as an entrepreneur where in order for us to create something, we are it's just like turning an idea into something that is very big. We know it along the way, but initially it's like, okay, this is where I'm starting. But then halfway through the journey, you realize, wait, this is can actually be bigger than what it was. And I love yeah. the fact that you guys are able to recognize that really early on and then kind of yeah. build a momentum around it and be like hey we can we can even go global we have a market that we can tap to it and there's a lot of people and, and people that can actually resonate to and you being an artist i feel like a lot of artists actually being in the game they forget to have their own personal identity they forget to also have the the entrepreneurial side of it so I actually love and admire the fact that you're able to kind of like, you know, understand that music is a lifestyle, clothing is a lifestyle, yeah. and then you merge the two together to have a successful like brand identity because somebody can be like, hey, Conquer, and then uh, Hazy Ngola, the two of them kind of match. It's similar to like OVO and Drake, you know? So I Exactly, love- exactly. Yeah. It's really exactly. powerful. <laughs> yeah, thank I'm you. I'm here for thank you guys, you. you know, this is, this is really cool. <laughs> thank you thank you yeah and another thing i wanted to ask you with regards to um just kind of the music itself are you currently working in any new music videos what are we gonna expect yeah upcoming projects what's going on yeah you know i've actually uh am i throughout my career i released um uh, we released a, a, a an ep with mm-hmm. my bandmate classic uh, of Homegrown African, which was Blanchard Blues mm-hmm. back in 2014, which was our debut year. Mm-hmm. And then it's fast forward, I released a solo project well, called Welcome to the Shop, which was like a commemoration for us launching the shop back in 2020. Mm-hmm. And then I've been working on my album for some time now. And it's not easy. I'm trying to, mm-hmm. you know, I'm trying to get it i'm a perfectionist so i'm trying to make sure that it's it's right but i'm hoping that by the end of this year i should release my debut album Mm -hmm. and in terms of my music career you know i was very very much focused on building um building my brand locally 
you yeah. know, before I take it out there. I, 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 it didn't matter to me whether it takes me five years, whether it takes me 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't going to rush into it, even though I was pressured into it. But, yo, a lot of people were telling me, man, you, you've got the skill, you've got the ability to go out there and actually make it. Why don't you mm -hmm. leave and go, you know, try and make a career out of, out mm -hmm. of your stuff out there, you know, try go make a career outside the country. Mm -hmm. But to me, it was more important that I stayed, you know, because if I don't do it, then who will? How are the other kids going to learn? You know, somebody needs to do it. Somebody needs to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. So for me, my career, I'll say that my career is basically something that I myself am using, you know, uh, a couple of years down the line, maybe it could be used as a template for other upcoming artists to be able to follow just to make it a bit easier for them you know what i mean yeah so for me in terms even with my music i was very focused on you know making sure that i solidify myself here before i take myself out there you know mm -hmm. so really this year for me is all about the international networks you know uh working with artists in, from from canada america mm -hmm. uh, south africa wherever they are you know uh, for me this that's what my focus is on this year so even with the music videos i'm trying to connect with uh international producers international videographers to be yeah. able to uh let them tell a malawian story from their perspective and from the uh information i give them you know from the music that i've made and for the music that we're potentially going to make together you know so for me mm -hmm. sonically um it's all about this year is all about the international collabos and all that stuff all right i'm excited to see all that goes down you know <laughs> and i'm here for yeah that. yeah yeah hopefully <laughs> hopefully it comes good <laughs> it will it will for sure because you put in a lot of effort and you being a perfectionist i'm definitely no doubt it's going to be a hit um another thing yeah. i wanted to also say i know you're being so humble about it but um you are uh, also selected in a farps 30 under 30 for the class of 2021. So congratulations yeah, yeah, yeah. on that. That's huge. I know you're being humble about it. So <laughs> <laughs> Bro, thanks a lot. Thanks, to a you. lot. <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, man. Um, that's that's that was that was crazy. Even for me, you know, um becoming the first Malawian musician to be on that list. Yeah. You know, it's such an honor. Like I said, you know. I'm willing to take risks. I'm willing to take chances. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, you know, I want to make my career. What I have made my career is I want to make it a template, you know, for, for other artists to follow suit, you know, because yeah. I know that we come from a less opportune country. You know, you, you know, you don't get a lot of opportunities here. You know, you have to make them for yourself. So basically that's what I'm trying to teach, you know? So even with the Forbes thing for me, it was like, I felt like it wasn't the reason why I'm always not talking about it or I don't really like to sing my own praises is because how I felt was that it was a team effort, you know, like even with my fans, because without them, I wouldn't be able to get on that list without mm -hmm. them patronizing the brand. I wouldn't end up on that list without the team that I have. I wouldn't end up on that list. So I feel like, you know, I cannot really say that it's Hayes who was on the Forbes list. I feel like it's Malawi. It's the people who put in the effort, who believe that, you know, we mm -hmm. could be doing stuff like that, you know? So mm -hmm. for me, it was such a great honor, obviously, to be on that list. But, you know, besides everything, obviously the networking with the other people from the other countries as well, you know, is really important for us, mm -hmm. you know? to establish ourselves on the continent and in the world, you know? So for me, I feel like it's a really huge plus that I was on that list and hopefully a bunch of other Malawians as well can end up on that list going forward. Yeah, I, I, I love that because, you know, everything that you do just by from the way that you're kind of like articulating your point of view of things is that you are trying to create like a, uh pavement or a pathway for people that are coming after you so that way not only yeah. are they inspired by your mission and inspired by your journey but they can also use it as a blueprint to be able to become successful and i feel like 
a lot of times, even just being an African uh, descent person who lives abroad, whenever we have a success, the success is not just for us individuals, it's success is for the whole continent, it's for the whole country. Yeah. So yeah. I love that you're able to kind of stress that, be like, hey, this is a win, but it's not just win for me, it's win for all. And yeah. I appreciate you for highlighting that. And I wish you all the best and more con more stuff that is going to come out of Malawi to be able to kind of put Malawi on the map because Canada needs to hear it. So um, we're going to be using Nisi Lexi to be able to give them that. Be like, hey, this is what's happening down there. People need to tap in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So for those who wanted to get in touch with you, um, follow your social media, purchase your brand or things of that nature, where can they find you and where can they stream your music or even like purchase your clothes? Yeah, well, um, uh, they can find me on Spotify, on all the DSPs. Mm -hmm. I'm available on all the DSPs, Spotify, mm -hmm. um, Deezer, you know. You just search Hazy Angola mm -hmm. and you find me there. Um, I'm on Instagram as well. So you can find me at Hazy Angola, at, at Hayes underscore Angola with mm -hmm. an H at the end. And on Twitter, my handle is at Angola. And also, um, they can follow Conquer on Facebook, on Twitter as well. It's Conquer Online on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, mm -hmm. We're currently uh, rebuilding our website. So our international customers, you can just DM us and we'll organize those, uh, basically courier it to wherever you are in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, sure. until the website is fully running right now, that's wh where they can where they can uh, make their purchases for the merchandise and all that stuff. But in the meantime, they can just get at me or get at Conquer Online on all the social media platforms to make their purchases as well. Awesome. So I will be posting all the link in the description below. So that way you guys can also tap in and follow Hazel, uh, Hayes Angola. And without further ado, I just want to say to you, thank you so much for being here today. It's an honor to have you. And I hope that you all mine. around the world get to tap in and listen to your incredible story as well as like, you know, follow your journey and they get to hear all the music that's coming out of Malawi and all the uh, amazing thing you guys are doing down there. Um, I know you have to rush, but thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Pleasure is all mine. Mm -hmm.